Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Tanae Quarter on the line, and she's CEO, author, and keynote speaker over at Presidential Lifestyle, and she's also host of the Money and Meaning Podcast. Tanae, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me, Adam. Oh my gosh, so I'm excited to get into today's topic. So we're going to talk about redefining the idea of wealth in America. So I know different opinions on this topic, and I'm excited to get your insight. But uh, before we do that, let's go a little bit further into what you're doing over at Presidential Lifestyle. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about the company, please. So Presidential Lifestyle is a wellness company focused on wealth in all of its forms. And we we focus on high achievers mostly. And why? Because high achievers have been known to sacrifice their wellness and their relationships, really sometimes even their dignity on this path to or their money mission, getting their money. And so we decided to focus on these high achievers and helping them to gain some insight into what's blocking them from really reaching a life of meaning. Now, we all know that money is the number one cause of stress. And stress is the cause of many major illnesses. And for that reason, we partner with doctors to help them help their patients. Usually those high achievers are coming to their doctors. The doctors are saying, you're stressed out. You know, these numbers are ridiculous. You're going to have to do something different. You need to go see Kenea at Presidential Lifestyle. So that's really our goal is to reach out to the doctors, empower them, so that they can serve their patients even more. And we can talk a little bit more about how we do that um, in just a few minutes, but that's basically what we do. We are a wellness company that really helps you reach your wealth and your wellness goals at the same time. You don't have to sacrifice one or the other. So, um, you know, at the end of this, I'm going to give you an opportunity to leave your, uh, you know, contact or social media or however somebody should follow up with you. So we have a lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, executives listening to this right now. What are typically, and I know it may vary, but what are typically is the type of client that's usually a right fit to work with you and your team? Because I want to make sure that the right individuals do follow up to connect. Oh, absolutely. That's a great question. So. The number one characteristic of the clients that we see or the patients that we see is that they're high achievers. They are the A type. You know, the they take massive action. They don't need any motivation. So no motivation, no need for motivation. They are motivated. They go to sleep motivated. These are the people who really need help stopping. So if you're one of those people that just can't stop yourself, work, 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 they probably are called workaholics. They might be going through a midlife crisis, though. They may say, you know, I got all the things on, on my resume. I, got the, I did everything society told me to do. I got the job. I got the, the spouse. I got the kids. I got the house. I got all the things, the cars, but I'm still not fulfilled. Why not? Because I followed the rules. I went to school, you know. And so they're questioning why is life not what they said it would be why am I not feeling fulfilled? And so those are the top two characteristics. They're high achievers, yet they are still feeling empty, sometimes even lonely, because, you know, they say it's lonely at the top, right? But it doesn't have to be. And so the third characteristic that I see, and this could be a male or a, or a female, a lot of times I would say 60% of our population is males, 40% females. But when it is a female, it is a female who is dominating, usually a male-dominated industry. But 
nonetheless, she is dominating in her industry, and she's had to take on some male characteristics in order to get there. So she is missing some of her femininity. And so that's the difference. But the male is missing some of his femininity too because I think that we believe that if you're a male, then you have to be masculine at 100% of the time. If you are a female, you have to be feminine 100% of the time, and it's just not true. We're finding that there's a formula that each of us needs to have in order to connect and feel whole. And so even though we're CEOs and high achievers and we have a lot of masculine energy, we have to be able to tap in to our feminine energy. And so that's the other characteristic is that this person usually hasn't tapped into that feminine energy that's inside of them. And so they're always harsh and they might even be described as crass or mean, sometimes angry or the the, wor- the worst word, asshole. So I hope mm-hmm. this is okay to say. <laughs> no, I, I totally get that. And um, I think I want to let's go further into today's topic. So really – um, redefining wealth or that meaning. I mean, maybe just to kind of kick us off, maybe tell us a little bit about more about what do you think the common concept is, and then uh, tell us a little bit more about your slant and how you're changing the view of it. So we like to say that the American dream is dead, and I am giving the, the eulogy. And the reason why the American dream is dead is just because it's outdated, and it really never worked for anybody. All it ever really did was bring us stress and frustration. It made us compare ourselves to others. We have this cookie cutter life that we're supposed to live, but it doesn't match up to what's in our heart or even what's in our head. So subconsciously, we have this program running of the life we want. I call it our idea of prosperity. But consciously, we're trying to follow the quo or what society says is supposed to be a happy life. So we do all the things, we check all the boxes, and then we still feel broken or lonely or whatever word we're using to describe our pain. We're still all in pain. And the reason is because even though we may have the money, we don't have the meaning. And that's what we see happens all the time. And so what we are doing is helping you customize your American dream. Now, this is a podcast, so it's going to be heard all over the world. And even though I'm saying American dream, really all over the world people have this idea of what the American dream is. We all have an idea of what America is. And many people want to move to America to have this dream, and then they find they get here, and it's not what they thought it was. So we're really making America meaningful again. Wow, well said. Um, What do you think? So let's, let's kind of take that picture of what it could be. Because I get, mm-hmm. I think we kind of understand where where we're at, and like it doesn't, you know, it didn't work for everybody. I agree with that. It maybe put a lot of pressure, a lot of stress on people that maybe didn't need to have it, or maybe for some people it did, and they maybe they achieved some things that they thought were the right things, like you said. And then after the while, they look at it, they look back, and they're like, "Oh, I'm still not happy. What happened? I thought I did what mm-hmm. I was supposed to do." Um, what do you think it could look like? So I like that you use the term "paint the picture." So imagine that. So one day. I go to these paint classes sometimes, and one day, I was a little frustrated the day I went to this paint class, and I painted this picture, and I didn't like it. I was like, ooh, the frustration is showing all over this picture, and I don't want, I don't want that hanging in my house. So what I did was I took a darker paint, and I painted over the whole thing, or at least most of it. And so what I want people to understand is even if you've painted a picture, that you don't really like, like maybe you have a job that you're not satisfied with, maybe you're in a relationship that's unfulfilling, maybe your kids don't really show up in the world you thought they would or the way you wish they would. Well, you can take the paint, the primer, and just paint right over that part of the picture and work on it again. Take some new color. It's called effort. We, we, we like to use the term work hard, but it really isn't hard work. It's working well or putting effort in that area. And if you put enough effort, not work, and the difference is work is the stuff we don't want to do, right? Like the admin crap that's on my desk that I keep putting off and I give to my operations person because I don't want to do it. That's work. I don't want to do it. Effort is when we do want to do it, but it's going to take some energy. 
So you really want to put that effort in. And if you can't do it on your own, just like in this class that I talked about, my pain class, I don't run the pain class. There's an instructor there who helps me and says, oh, mix these two colors together. Oh, do this this way. Oh, just just guide your brush a little bit more to the right, and you'll get that line that you're looking for. So you don't have to do it on your own. You might use a guide, what we call a guide, because you're the hero of your own life. So you don't need anybody to come rescue you, but you may need a guide, kind of like Yoda was for Luke Skywalker. Fantastic. I love it. Um, and I want to I wanna spend a little bit of time also on your podcast. So I'm a huge podcast fan. I'm a huge um, – I love, I love like, doing what we do on the podcast side of things. And so I love bringing new podcasts and podcasters to my audience. So the Money and Meaning Podcast, what was the inspiration for this show? So we just did a huge rebranding. In the beginning, we focused a lot on couples because what we find is that our CEOs, our high achievers, often sacrifice their relationships on this quest for success. And so a lot of the talk was on relating to the couple. And what, but what we really found was that that wasn't all. And so we opened up and we said, you know what, let's talk about turning your money into meaning. Because many of our listeners and our high achievers, they've gotten the money. They just don't know what to do with it now, right? They bought things with it, and the things didn't do enough. And so a lot of times we hear these songs and sayings and quotes about how money can't buy happiness. But we say that money can help you find happiness. If you have money, then you have enough. You can take that money and you can go and try some things. But you want to journal or what we call chronicle that journey because you're on a quest, you're on a journey, you're searching for meaning. That's what it really is all about. And meaning is also another word for love. You're searching for love. A lot of times we're using money to get love. Now, we don't recognize that. We don't realize that. And one of the things we have is a quiz that shows you how you are using money to get love or how you're using money to show your love. And we don't usually know that about ourselves. So on the podcast, there are two things that we talk about most. One is what I just said, how we're using money to get love and how to adjust that because sometimes it doesn't work in our favor. We don't actually get love. We end up getting more stress and frustration. And so the second thing we talk about is that search for meaning over money and how we do that. And a lot of times we can't do it on our own, like I said. You need a guide or a host that can guide you through what those steps look like because they didn't teach it in school. Society hasn't passed it down to us. And so now we just feel frustrated and angry because we don't know the steps. But that's what we give on the podcast, the steps to turn your money into meaning. Oh, my gosh, I love this. Um, and so, Kanae, first off, I can talk to you all day about this. We're about <laughs> out of time for this episode. So that being said, a couple things. So if somebody wants to learn more about presidential lifestyle or if they want to listen to your podcast, which I highly suggest, the Money and Meaning podcast, I mean, what's the best way for them to follow up and to connect with you and your overall brand overall? Okay, yes. So if you want to listen to the podcast, wherever you like to listen to podcasts, just search the Money Money and Meaning podcast, or you can search my name, Kene, and it'll come up. That's first. But you can always go to our website to listen to our podcast as well. And that's presidentiallifestyle.com slash podcast. Now, while you're there, you may want to look at, we have a free community. Now, our free community is, and let me rephrase that. We have a free trial for our community. Now, our community is on doctors, wellness healers. However, if you're there and you're just curious about the principles that go into how to turn money into meaning, or you serve a population like high achievers and you want to show them how to turn their money into meaning, getting in our community and getting those principles can help you serve your tribe even better. Or maybe you are a high achiever and you're saying, I'm already there. I'm going through that midlife crisis. Help me. I need you. Then on that same website, presidentiallifestyle.com, you'll see an option to book a consultation or what we call an introductory conversation with me. Go ahead and book that time. And you and I, I will pour into you for about 60 minutes. And no, it's not free because my time is 
just as valuable as your time is, but I promise you, you'll not be disappointed because when you leave, you'll have so much value and you will already start feeling better just from our time together. And that's awesome. I love it. I'm a big fan of what you're doing and how you're doing it and the and the value that you are pouring into people. So I think it's great. I like where your heart's at and uh, and really the work that you're putting out there and then and that you're doing this podcast. So love supporting that podcast community and uh, definitely everyone go check that out. The Money and Meeting Podcast. Um, highly highly um, recommend listening to that. So Kane, first off, yes. um, thank you for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure having you on and and getting more of your background and what you're doing over at Presidential Life out and the money and meaning podcast and to the audience as always thank you for tuning in hope you got a lot of value out of this if you did don't forget to subscribe to the podcast leave me a review on the apple itunes store and if you're watching this on our youtube channel mission matters business definitely give us a subscribe there but also leave us some comments on the video love to know what kind of projects and things that you're working on and connect thanks again for coming on the show absolutely thank you for having me also i'll say if you want to follow me on instagram linkedin I like hanging out there, too, so we can hang out together. And what's the handle? I am at Kine Quarter on both LinkedIn and Instagram, K-I-N-E-C-O-R-D-E-R.